He's always ready to help load mailbags onto the trains too. Thank you, Tom, whistles Percy. Yes, indeed, agrees Thomas. You're a really useful postman. Ah, replies Tom, but where would I be without my van? We make a grand pair. One day, Tom wasn't at the platform. A postman they didn't know dumped the bags on the platform and disappeared. What happened to Tom? wondered Percy. And his old van, said his driver. No wonder the new postman looks cross. Trying to carry mailbags on a bicycle would make anyone miserable. <whistles> Next morning, the engines were glad to see Tom back again. But he looked very sad. Postmaster decided my van was too expensive to run. The rounds take longer on my bike. I'm sorry, I can't stop to help you. I wish I could cheer Tom Tipper up, sighed Percy, the small engine. He was just wondering how this might be done when his thoughts were rudely interrupted. A man was shouting at Tom Tipper. You've got to come back to the Fat Controller's office. He needs you to sign some important papers right away. Oh, dear, replied Tom Tipper. This is going to make me later still. He was in a hurry and being careless. He propped his bike against Percy's mail truck and rushed away. Stop! cried Percy, but Tom was out of sight. There was worse to come. Percy's driver hadn't seen the bike and he started away. Oh no! cried Percy. Now there'll be trouble. And there was. Percy's driver quickly stopped the train. Everyone came running to the scene. Tom Tipper's bicycle was in pieces. I'm sorry, Mr Tipper, apologised Percy. Never mind, Percy, said the postman. It wasn't your fault, but now I've only got my legs to get the mail delivered. Whatever will happen next, Tom Tipper soon found out. Next day, he was waiting happily for Percy. Beep, beep, whistled Percy. Is that a smart new van, I see? It is indeed. That accident did me a good turn, Percy. My chief decided a new van would do the job. Much better than another bike and worth the expense. Now I can always be on time again. It seems, continued the Fat Controller, that there are many girls and boys who would like to meet you. Therefore, we are all going to the big city far away. Hooray! Hooray! The engines whistled. Silent! called the Fat Controller. Other engines will be working here while you are away, so please show them what to do. As Annie and Clarabelle were going to the big city too, Thomas and Oliver practised with some other coaches. Thomas grew more and more excited. Too excited for his own good. I'm glad I'm a splendid engine, he puffed. The Fat Controller thinks I'm really useful. I had a race with Bertie once. I whooshed through the tunnel and stopped an inch from the buffers. Then, Thomas made his mistake. Just like this, he boasted. No one was hurt, but Thomas's front was badly bent. They telephoned to the Fat Controller. I'll send up the workmen, he said, but if they can't mend Thomas in time, we'll have to go to the big city without him. Poor Thomas. Eight o'clock next morning, the engines waited at the junction. Toby and Percy were each on a truck and Duck had pushed them into place behind Edward. Gordon, James and Henry were waiting to lead off. They whistled impatiently. The Fat Controller looked at his watch. I'll wait one more minute for Thomas, then we have to go. Oh, 
Thank goodness you're still here, panted Thomas. I hope we're not late, as it's just after eight. The guard blew his whistle and waved his flag. The engines cheered. Look out, big city, here we come. And the cavalcade puffed away. Later in the big city, all the engines were lined up in a splendid shed. The children were delighted to meet their friends. I'm glad the little girl wrote to us, whispered Thomas to Percy. Isn't it wonderful what happiness a letter can bring? It took them all of the next day to travel to the other railway. Darkness fell and the cold wind blew. Ooh, what's that? murmured Rusty. But it was only the sounds of the lonely scrapyard. Diesels, silent and still, lined up on guard. Who are you? Rusty plucked up courage. I'm a shed and sidings inspection, Diesel. Have you any engines in the shed? No, no. Rusty rallied again. Then, uh, what about the sidings? One. We have one. Rusty grew braver still. Then I'll just go and inspect. A small engine with a tall funnel stood sad and alone in the shadowy siding. His driver was huddled in the cab, keeping him company. Excuse me, said Rusty. Do you like bluebells? The engine looked startled. Yes, bluebells are beautiful. Then you're soon going to see lots of them because I'm getting you out of here. Everyone worked fast. It was difficult to set the fire, but soon it was glowing hot and Stepney had a good head of steam. Rusty's engineer agreed to be Stepney's fireman. So off they set, past the bleak and brooding line of diesels. Where is he going? They hissed. Just down the line, replied Rusty. And they chuffered quickly away. We've done it. We're over the border and back on our own railway. Mission accomplished. When Rusty and the engine arrived in the valley, a big welcome awaited them. We shall mend you and give you a new coat of paint, said the manager. His driver was delighted. You lucky old engine. You've been saved by the Bluebell Railway. And my friend Rusty, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Rusty. Now the little engine is as happy as can be and helps all the passengers who visit at Bluebell time. His name is Stepney, but everyone calls him the Bluebell Engine. He keeps busy and I'm sure he means well, but he's bouncy and rude. He sings and sways and swivels around. His driver calls it rock and roll. I understand, said Scarlowy gravely. His driver interrupted. Duncan has done it again. He's stuck in a tunnel. Come on, old boy. We'll have to get him out. Scar Lowy was pleased. He wanted a run and looked forward to meeting Duncan. They found the guards van and some workmen and hurried up the line. How nice and smooth the rails are, thought Scar Lowy. They've mended all the old bumps. The little diesel helped do that. What a difference Rusty's made to the line. Quite soon they found Duncan. He was stuck at the far end of the tunnel and he was very cross. I'm a plain blunt engine, our speakers are fine. Tunnels should be tunnels and not rabbit holes. This railway is no good at all. 
Don't be silly, snapped his driver. This tunnel is quite big enough for engines who don't rock and roll. It took some while to clear away the rocks and set Duncan free again. At last, Scar Lowy was able to push Duncan and his coaches safely through. The guard's van was left on the siding, and the workmen stayed to make sure everything was safe. Duncan grumbled all the way home, but Scarlowy paid no attention. Later, the fat controller spoke severely to Duncan. Listen to me. There is nothing wrong with that tunnel. You stuck in it because you tried to do rock and roll. Tunnels are not dance floors, and you are not a pop star. The fat controller gave his full attention to Duncan's funnel. If it happens again, he ended ominously. I shall find ways to cut you down to size. In other words, your career is <coughs> on the line. Need I say more?